you don't read the word of God, but you walk around calling yourself a Christian, but you're still living like the rest of the world. You're in deception because you think that you're Christian because you were saved and you said the sinner's prayer and everything was good to go, but there is no transformation. But then when you do finally start to hear the truth and you do start to really hear what God's word is saying, you experience that conviction from the Holy Spirit. I bet you do. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and to another God's Little Makeup Arts Talk. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button along with the notification bell. That way you're notified of all of my future uploads along with that like button. So that way more people can be introduced to this channel so that they can get these testimonies and this loving word of God. Is it important to, or let me, let me, let me change the question. Do you have to read your Bible in order to have a relationship with Jesus? Think about anybody in your life right now that you have a relationship with, whether that be a friend, family member, marriage, or if you're in a courtship even, and you guys are courting each other with intention to marry, how do you spend your time with them? Do you give them once a week? When I'm getting to know someone, I spend time with them. If it's a friend, we might not be talking every single day, but we talk often. We hang out. Enough for me to get to know that person and enough for them to get to know me. And it's never dreadful. The whole point of what I'm saying right now is in order for you to properly say that you have a relationship with someone else is to have a relationship with them. So to answer that question, do you have to read your Bible in order to have a relationship with Jesus? Guys, yes. Yes. This is how you learn what the do's are, what the don'ts are, what love means, who love is. This is how you learn about the times that we're in. This is how you learn about the times that are to come, what to expect. You'll hear the Lord tell us throughout the Bible not to be afraid of certain things. Do not be afraid of man. He also lets us know about the fight that us as Christians go through on a daily and how we should properly fight against the principalities and powers of darkness and spiritual realm. The Bible I heard on a video uh, on one of the platforms, I think it was Tiffany, Tiffany, Tiffany Montgomery. I heard her in a clip say something that was actually really powerful to me. The Lord has given us an open book test. The answers are in his word, yet nobody wants to pick up the Bible because they probably, I'm going to use myself as an example. For the longest time, I really fought with reading the word of God primarily because I felt like it was going to get in the way of what I had going on which you know, my, in my flesh. And then I thought that the Bible was boring. This, this is me not walking with the Lord at all. And then this is me as a so-called Christian for the longest time. Oh, I have my personal relationship with the Lord. I, I, don't, I don't have to do all that extra. God knows my heart. Oh, that one's famous right there. I need for you guys to realize something here. If, 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 if nothing else, God does indeed know our hearts. Do you understand how wicked the heart is and how deceitful the heart is and how unstable the heart is and why you shouldn't be following your heart? Because your heart gets you in trouble. The heart is your thoughts. It, what is it? Your mind will and your emotions. That's the, the soul, right? The soul, like what you feel. A lot of people go based off of how they feel. You shouldn't be doing that. You should be going based on truth, capital T. And the only way that you'll be able to get truth is by reading and studying. The word of God is alive. There are books within the Bible. There are stories within the Bible that will help us to look at certain situations that each person in the Bible that God chose or how he used other people to show who God is. Certain situations, circumstances, losses, gains. God's word is alive, y'all. And it's so fascinating. His word is so beautiful because it's true. Nowadays, I just can't go a day without reading God's word. You will forever be deceived in this life, in this lifetime that has been given to us. You will be deceived without the word of God in you. Forever you will be deceived. If you keep from studying God's word, 
Do you have a relationship with the Lord where you spend time with him in his word? Time, like the time that we give to our significant other, right? The time that we give to our friends when we want to go out on the weekends. Got to go to the club, right? You got to look good for these men. There's a purpose for why we do everything that we do. Just like there is a reason for why we choose not to read God's word. We've got the whole armor of God. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And as the shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. What you're fighting against is not flesh and blood. This is spiritual, y'all. The stuff that is going on in this world is spiritual. You have two things. You have good and then you have evil. And the evil things that are going on in this world that you see, you can't look at the person. You have to, you have to look beyond that. It's spiritual. It's spiritual. And side note, when people are acting out in a wicked way, we should be praying that the Lord would reveal himself in a way that only he can to these individuals. Because when you think about it, there was a point in our lives where we were just not, we were not living right for Christ. We weren't living for Christ at all. And we were doing things that pleased our flesh. That can be sex without marriage. You know, just being promiscuous, giving your body to just anyone, trusting the wrong people, sleeping with those people, cussing out people just because somebody looked at you sideways. So who we're fighting against, it is the cosmic powers and the authorities and the rulers of darkness. When something is going wrong and you don't understand, it is so good to have God's word. The Holy Spirit will bring things to your remembrance. When you're studying the word of God, something comes up in a part of your day that doesn't sit right with you, the Holy Spirit will, will remind you of what God's word says. We are to live righteously. We are to live holy lifestyles. Why? Because God is holy and he calls for his children to be holy. We're not supposed to look like the rest of the world. If Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, was tempted by the enemy, what makes you think that we're not going to be tempted? When we are tempted, how are you going to know if you're being tempted or not to do something that God says no to if you don't have a relationship with him. If you are a lukewarm Christian, you don't read the word of God, but you walk around calling yourself a Christian, but you're still living like the rest of the world. You're in deception because you think that you're Christian because you were saved and you said the sinner's prayer and everything was good to go, but you're not, you're, there is no transformation. But then when you do finally start to hear the truth, when you do start to really hear what God's word is saying, you experience that conviction from the Holy Spirit. I bet you do. I bet, I, I bet you do. Cause I know I did. Oh, I know I did. And it, and, it, and, and I, I would feel it so much. This is me like as a like straight up, like lukewarm Christian. And even when I wasn't walking with the Lord, y'all, them spirits, not the Holy Spirit, but the other spirits that were in me were not okay with hearing the word of God. You start feeling that agitation. You feel agitated. So you start fighting back with people. And your main fight is, well, I have my own relationship with the Lord. I don't have to do this, this, and this. Read my Bible. To say that you know someone, you have to have had spent a sufficient amount of time with that person. If you say you love Jesus, how willing are you to put in that work to get to know him because he wants, he wants us to know who he is. He wants to come into your heart and start removing things that are not of him. And he wants to take up space in you. He wants to bless you. 
in a way that you can never even imagine. To know someone is to have intimacy. To know God and to have true intimacy with him is to have his word engrafted into us. We need to be chewing on God's word. He's also the water of life, just constantly flowing. And it's better than any purified, any spring water that you could ever sip on here on earth. Because guess what? You'll be thirsty again. But Jesus Christ is the true living water. Come on now. John 4, 14. But whoever drinks of the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Also keep in mind that he is the provider of all things. When you are adhering yourself to the Lord, when you glue yourself to Christ, when you take on his yoke, his, his is lighter. He doesn't promise that we're going to come out of the stuff that we are, we are walking through right now, but he will carry the heavier side of that load. It's best that we stay yoked to him. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30, to receive peace, you will receive all that through his word and to be in his presence 